everybody it's Andrew welcome back to the channel this is going to be a book haul for August I didn't do one for July uh, because I just didn't have the time so I've got some books here there's two books from a series of three the th first one I bought in July so we'll start with those two and they are the Good Girls Guide to Murder series so I bought the first one read it and really enjoyed it and so I picked up Good girl, bad blood. So in this one, it says someone is talking, someone is missing. Nobody's talking, but this time everybody's listening. Pip Fitz Amobi is not a detective anymore. Her true crime podcast is about the murder case she solved last year have gone viral. Yet Pip insists her investigating deals are behind her, but she will have to go back on her word when someone close to her goes missing and the police can't do anything about it. If they won't investigate, then Pip will, uncovering more of her town's dark secrets along the way. But will she find the answers before time runs out? And the third book and the thickest one is. Uh, dead girl walking and this one says I actually haven't looked at this Pip Fitz and Moby is haunted by her last investigation but soon a new case finds her and this time it's all about Pip she has a stalker one who keeps asking who will look for you when you're the one who disappears Pip soon discovers a connection between her stalker and the local serial killer but the police refuse to act as the dangerous game plays out it's clear that if Pip doesn't find the answers she's as good as dead so that sounds really good so I bought um, a couple of Jack the Rippers last month to add to the collection. Uh, the first one is The Hand of a Woman by John Morris. The Jack the Ripper murders of 1888 exert a macabre hold on our imagination. Among the first serial murders, their brutality and bizarreness and seeming impossibility of detection have a terrible fascination. What kind of person could have overstepped the boundary of what marks humankind and performed such horrific deeds? How could they not have been caught by the unprecedented police effort? The murders were reported on around the world and the murderer was the first was the first to be given a macabre nickname. He has been the subject of hundreds of books and several films but his identity remains a mystery. Suspects have included the eminent Victorian doctor Sir William Gull, royal gynaecologist Sir John Williams and the painter Walter Sickert. Conspiracy theories abound involving Masonic, Jewish and other connections. This is the story of extensive research of John Morris and his late father, starting with the many unresolved questions about the murders. They shockingly conclude that they could be answered if Jack was in reality a woman and not a man, but who could she be? After many twists and turns, they reach an all too pl plausible conclusion. And then the second one is called The Fifth Victim and is by Antonia Alexander. So The Fifth Victim was Mary Jane Kelly. Um, between August and November 1888, five women were murdered in Whitechapel. For over 100 years, the murders perpetrated by Jack the Ripper have remained among one of the world's greatest unsolved crimes until now. Antonia Alexander is a direct descendant of Mary Kelly, the Ripper's final victim. Her grandmother, also Mary, has now decided for the first time to tell the family's story. After rummaging through her grandmother's belongings, Mary found a small wooden box containing Mary Kelly's locket. The locket contained a picture of a man, a man she had always thought was her great-grandfather. Now she realises that the photo in the locket is that of Sir John Williams. The fifth victim reveals the compelling story of Mary Kelly and her relationship with one of the most recent Ripper sub suspects. There were stories told to her by her grandmother, stories about Mary Kelly and her affair with a prominent doctor by the name of John Williams, stories she had kept to herself until now. This is possibly the last chance she has to tell the world what she knows what really happened to Mary Kelly, her great-grandmother. Prior to this book, no one had found any evidence linking Mary Kelly to the prime suspect, John Williams, but Antonia has exclusive access to documents and files belonging to Williams' great-nephew. This is the incredible true story of the Ripper's final murder. Is it, though? Really? Is it? Do you think? Anyway. On to next, I got two fictional Marilyn books this month. The first one I've got is Marilyn, My Marilyn. Um by Art Johnson and this one is the summer of 1962 and 25-year-old journalist Rory Long receives a phone call at quitting time. It's Marilyn Monroe. She personally wants to compliment him on a review he wrote of the new collected works of the poet Carl Sandberg. She then enlists the cub reporter to tell her story. She doesn't want to be remembered as a joke. 
When they meet, Rory is captivated by her knowledge of classical music, art and literature. As their relationship intensifies, Rory experiences a coming of age inspired by this side of Marilyn, if you know, and at the same time Marilyn is influenced by Rory to begin reassessing her own life. But when Rory's boss assigns him to write an article on the unsolved murder of the Black Dahlia Paranoia and Tension Mount, file papers go missing, then mysteriously return. An unknown covert organisation watches Marilyn Monroe's every move, thinking she may hold a clue to the Dahlia case. And just when Rory can feel he's getting closer to the truth, J. Edgar Hoover himself intervenes to request that Rory be reassigned. Rapid changes are about to unfold in the land of the free, and they may be more costly than even Rory can surmise. In Art Johnson's latest novel, he continues his style of combining historical fact and fiction to offer the reader a steady stream of drama, tension and humour. Marilyn, my Marilyn, reveals a fresh insight into the most iconic woman of modern times, not as a biography, but with the view of a nation which often buries the truth with its dead. So that one, interesting. Now the second one is totally, totally fiction and it's called uh, Gentlemen Prefer Murder by Hudson Taylor, The Marilyn Monroe Mysteries. So this one I got because I thought it just sounded really interesting. So it just says Marilyn Monroe is alive and solving supernatural mysteries. That's it. I know nothing about it other than that. I love the cover. So that's going to be an interesting one to read. Try and read that this month, I think. Non-fiction book I got is called Echo of Distant Water uh, by J.B. Fisher. This tells the 1958 story of the disappearance of Portman's Martin family. So this is a case that has been featured on YouTube's Adventures with Purpose. They went searching for them. Um, basically, Ken Martin, his wife Barbara and their three young daughters left their northeast Portland home in December of 1958 to search for Christmas greens in the Columbia River Gorge and never returned. The Martins' disappearance spurred the largest missing person search in Oregon history and the mystery has remained perplexingly unsolved to this day. For the past six years, J.B. Fisher has pored over the case after finding in his garage a stack of old Oregon Journal newspapers about the, about the story. Through a series of serendipitous encounters, Fisher obtained a wealth of first-hand and never-before-publicised information about the case, including police reports from several agencies, materials and photos belonging to the Martin family and the personal notebooks and papers of Multoma County Sheriff's Detective Walter E. Graven, who was always convinced the case was a homicide rather than an accident, and worked tirelessly to prove it. Graven, however, faced real resistance from his superiors to bring his findings to light. Used as a trail left behind his 1988 death, um, to guide future researchers, Graven's personal documents provide fascinating insight into the question of what happened to the Martins, a path leading to abduction and murder, an intimate family secret and civic corruption going all the way to the Kennedys in Washington, D.C. So, yeah, Adventures with Purpose did highlight this case. Two of the daughters' bodies were recovered something, sometime like in May, I believe, of the following year, May of 59. Um, but the other three uh, and their vehicle are still missing to this day. So it's fascinating. I love a bit of history. I got... Uh, Paul's mum gave us The Wind in the Willows. I'm pretty sure she didn't mean to because I think she said she wanted to, to read it. But this is obviously uh, Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows. Um, this is mostly to read to Jennifer, so that will be read at some point. Uh, spring is in the air and Mole has found a wonderful new world. There's boating with Ratty, a feast with Badger and hijinks on the open road with that reckless ruffian Mr Toad of Toad Hall. The four become the firmest of friends but after Toad's latest escape can they join together and beat the wretched weasels. Classic. I read the first of Stig Larson's um, The Girl books, A Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. So I now have The Girl Who Played with Fire, book two. Um... Yeah, picked this up in charity shop. Um, so the expose, Millennium Pash publisher Mikhail Bloomquist has made his reputation exposing corrupt establishment figures. So when a young journalist approaches him with an investigation into sex trafficking, Bloomquist cannot resist waging war on powerful figures who control the industry the murder. When a young couple are found dead in their Stockholm apartment, it's straightforward job for Inspector Bublansky. Blansky and his team. The killer left the weapon at the scene and the fingerprints on the gun point in only one direction. The girl who played with fire. 
Ex-security analyst Elizabeth Salander is wanted for murder. Her history of unpredictable and vengeful behaviour makes her an official danger to society, but nobody can find her. The only way Salander can be reached is by computer, but she can break into almost any network she chooses. So yes, I'm looking forward to that one. What else have we got? This is one my mum got from the charity shop. It looks very 80s. Nice 80s looking cover with the two girls. Very 80s. Um, this is Loyalties by Julie Ellis. Towards the close of the 19th century, two young sisters part forever, divided by their love for the same man. Naomi cheats Rachel out of her romance and her inheritance in the family business, acts which are to rebound and echo through the years and generations to come in the 1960s. Naomi's heirs, Anne and Felicia, are to be the sole beneficiaries of the millionaires millionaire s's will but there's one condition they have to run the business empire together for 20 years before they inherit and if either of them gives up both will forfeit the inheritance the women's beliefs and aspirations could not be more different felicia is glamorous and greedy while anne is passionate conservationist against a power back background of jealousy and bitter feud they must struggle for power and control while their family is torn apart for about in a hundred years and three generations loyalties is the stunning blockbuster of love honour and hope and of betrayal passion and greed yeah. then I've got another one from the charity shop That Woman by Helen Monks Takar she's got your job she wants your life when Catherine first meets her new intern, Lily, she's captivated. Young, beautiful and confident, Lily reminds Catherine of everything she once was and it's not long before she develops a dark fascination with her new colleague. But Lily is as Lily as perfect as she seems or does she have a sinister hidden agenda? As Catherine is drawn into an obsessive power struggle with the intern, a disturbing picture emerges of two women hiding dark secrets and who are desperate to do anything to come out on top. Sounds good. Uh, my classic for the month, oops, upside down, is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Needs no introduction. We all know Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. This again is one of the Penguin Cough Band classics, which I am collecting. I'll be reading that shortly. And the final book I got in the month of August is Taylor Jenkins Reads Malibu Rising. I do like her books. August 83 is the day of Nina Rivera's annual end of summer party and everyone who is anyone wants to be around the Rivers. Surfer and supermodel Nina, brothers Jay and Hud and their baby sister Kit. Together the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the children of the legendary singer Mick Reaver. By midnight the party will be completely out of control. By morning the Reaver mansion will have gone up in flames but before that the alcohol will flow, the music will play and the secrets will come bubbling to the surface. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh there is one more. Very quickly uh, Victoria Fox Temptation Island because my battery's about to go. Fame, money, success, Laurie wants them, Aurora is being destroyed by them and Stevie's got them at her best friend's expense. These three women are drawn unwittingly to the shores of Temptation Island, all looking for their own truth, but they discover a secret so shocking there's no turning back. It's wicked, it's sensational, are you ready to be told? Wow, some good books there that I bought in the month of August. What are you looking forward to? What do you want to see me read first? Let me down, down in the comments and I will pick it up for you. I might have already read them, you never know, I've read a few of these books. Let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody. Bye.